and that was the beginning of banking. The banker paid a low interest rate on deposits of other people's money that he then loaned out at a higher interest. The difference covered the bank's cost of operation and its profit. The logic of this system was simple, and it seemed like a reasonable way to satisfy the demand for credit. However, this is not the way banking works today. Our goldsmith banker was not content with the income remaining after sharing the interest earnings with his depositors, and the demand for credit was growing fast as Europeans spread out across the world. But his loans were limited by the amount of gold his depositors had in his vault. That's when he got an even bolder idea. Since no one but himself knew what was actually in his vaults, he could lend out claim checks on gold that wasn't even there. As long as all the claim check holders didn't come to the vault at the same time and demand real gold, how would anyone find out? This new scheme worked very well, and the banker became enormously wealthy on the interest paid on gold that did not exist. The idea that the banker would just create money out of nothing was too outrageous to believe, so for a long time the thought did not occur to people. But the power to just invent money went to the banker's head, as you can well imagine. In time, the magnitude of the banker's loans and his ostentatious wealth did trigger suspicions once again. Some borrowers started to demand real gold instead of paper representations. Rumors spread. Suddenly, several wealthy depositors showed up to remove their gold. The game was up. A sea of claim check holders flooded the street outside the closed doors of the bank. Alas, the banker did not have enough gold and silver to redeem all the paper he had put into their hands. This is called a run on the bank, and it is what every banker dreads. This phenomenon of a run on the bank ruined individual banks and not surprisingly damaged public confidence in all bankers. It would have been straightforward to outlaw the practice of creating money from nothing. But the large volumes of credit the bankers were offering had become essential to the success of European commercial expansion. So instead the practice was legalized and regulated. Bankers agreed to abide by limits on the amount of fictional loan money that could be lent out. The limit would still be a number much larger than the actual value of gold and silver in the vault. Quite often the ratio was nine fictional dollars to one actual dollar in gold. These regulations were enforced by surprise inspections. It was also arranged that, in the event of a run, central banks would support local banks with emergency infusions of gold. Only if there were runs on a lot of banks simultaneously would the banker's credit bubble burst and the system come crashing down. Over the years, the fractional reserve system and its integrated network of banks backed by a central bank has become the dominant money system of the world. At the same time, the fraction of gold backing the debt money has steadily shrunk to nothing. The basic nature of money has changed. In the past, a paper dollar was actually a receipt that could be redeemed for a fixed weight of gold or silver. In the present, a paper or digital dollar can only be redeemed for another paper or digital dollar. In the past, privately created bank credit existed only in the form of private banknotes, which people had the choice to refuse, just as we have the choice to refuse someone's private check today. In the present, privately created bank credit is legally convertible to government-issued fiat currency, the dollars, loonies, and pounds we habitually think of as money. Fiat currency is money created by government fiat, or decree, and legal tender laws declare that citizens must accept this fiat money as payment for debt or else the courts will not enforce the obligation. So now the question is, if governments and banks can both just create money, then how much money exists? In the past, the total amount of money in existence was limited to the actual physical quantities of whatever commodity was in use as money. For example, in order for new gold or silver money to be created, more gold or silver had to be found and dug out of the ground. And 
And that's not all. Banks create only the amount of the principal. They don't create the money to pay the interest. Where is that supposed to come from? The only place borrowers can go to obtain the money to pay interest is the general economy's overall money supply. But almost all that overall money supply has been created exactly the same way as bank credit that has to be paid back with more than was created. So everywhere there are other borrowers in the same situation, frantically trying to obtain the money they need to pay back both principal and interest from a total money pool which contains only principal. The big problem here is that for long-term loans, such as mortgages and government debt, the total interest far exceeds the principal. So unless a lot of extra money is created to pay the interest, it means a very high proportion of foreclosures and a non-functioning economy. To maintain a functional society, the rate of foreclosure needs to be low. And so, to accomplish this, more and more new debt money has to be created to satisfy today's demands for money to service the previous debt. But of course, this just makes the total debt bigger, and that means more interest must ultimately be paid, resulting in an ever-escalating and inescapable spiral of mounting indebtedness. It is only the time lag between money's creation as new loans and its repayment that keeps the overall shortage of money from catching up and bankrupting the entire system. However, as the bank's insatiable credit monster gets bigger and bigger, the need to create more and more debt money to feed it becomes increasingly urgent. Why are interest rates so low? Why do we get unsolicited credit cards in the mail? Why is the U.S. government spending faster than ever? Could it be to stave off collapse of the entire monetary system? A rational person has to ask, can this really go on forever? Isn't a collapse inevitable?